Welcome to today's video where I wanted to share with you some of the best things that you can see with the Celestron Skymaster 15 by 70s. Now this is a common question that I see particularly around specific makes and models of binoculars notwithstanding the Celestron Skymaster 15 by 70s. So today I'm just going to walk you through my personal experiences of what I've been able to observe with these since getting them. So we do know that these binoculars have a 15 times magnification and a 70 millimeter objective lens diameter. But what does that actually mean? So you can see those numbers on the binoculars here. So what will you be able to see? Before I walk you through some of my favorite celestial objects that I like to observe with these, I do just wanted to mention that I do have a, a review of these binoculars on my channel and I would link that uh, a, a link to the video in the description down below if you did want to watch that because that just walks you through all kind of the spec the thing the accessories you get included with these binoculars and just some of the things I like as well but back to today's topic my favorite things to observe with these now do consider your uh, observing location the time of year and environment environmental factors like light pollution will all play a role here but under good viewing conditions you can expect to see Number one, my favourite thing to observe is the moon. So perhaps a little bit obvious, but it's important to call this out as you can get some really, really good views of the moon, in particularly its craters and also even some of its mountains as well. So it's probably my favourite thing uh, to observe purely because you can get a lot of detail and definition. So number two is the Andromeda Galaxy. So. This galaxy is also known as M31, and it is the nearest spiral galaxy to the Milky Way, about two and a half million light years away. It is the brightest external galaxy visible in our night sky. You can start to see the elliptical shape through these 15 by 70s, which does look really, really cool. On to number three, the Orion Nebula. So the Orion Nebula, also known as M42, is a vibrant star-forming region located in the Orion constellation. So it's one of the brightest nebula, and through these binoculars, it looks like a fuzzy smudge, though you can start to discern its shape. And due to the uh, field of view of these binoculars, which is 4.4 degrees, um, you can see a number of blue stars around it, which also looks fantastic. Number four is the Lagoon Nebula, which is M8. So the Lagoon Nebula is a large interstellar cloud and star-forming region in the constellation Sagittarius. So it appears as a soft glow with sparkling stars, which I believe are part of the associated open cluster NGC 6530. So these are really good for watching or observing the, the, the Lagoon Nebula. At number five is the Wild Duck Cluster. So also known as M11, it is a compact open star cluster in the constellation Scutum, named for its re resemblance to a flock of ducks in flight. It's actually one of the richest and most compact open star clusters known. And the stars appear as a shimmer through these binoculars, but they do look absolutely fantastic. Now in terms of other Messier objects, M16, which is the Eagle Nebula, M17, the Horseshoe Nebula, and M20, the Tr Trifid Nebula, and M81, M82, and M83 are all visible under the right uh, conditions with these binoculars. So absolutely fantastic stuff. So ultimately, various open clusters, wide doubles, globular clusters, and along with the brightest nebulas and galaxies are all visible with these binoculars. And lastly, at number seven, it's actually a duo. Last but certainly not least, I love to observe the stars Capella and Antares. So Capella is a bright yellow golden star in the Auriga constellation, I think that's how you pronounce that, while Antares is a red supergiant star in Scorpius. Now both are prominent in their respective constellations and are known for their distinctive colours and brightness in the night sky. And through these binoculars, the golden light and of, of Capella and the red hue of Antares is absolutely stunning. So ultimately the 15 by 70s are really versatile binoculars and there's a lot more out there you can observe with them. 
Granted, at 15 times magnification, your observations for deep sky objects are going to be relatively limited, but at their size and weight, you can observe for extended periods of time with these without necessarily needing a tripod. I probably would recommend a tripod if you are going to look at some of those uh, celestial objects that I've mentioned here today. So they are very practical and they're relatively lightweight, easy to use. They're really just a great pair of binoculars that I've been really satis satisfied with and have seen some great things with. So that's the end of today's video. I hope this video was useful. If it was, please do hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, observations about what I've discussed, please drop them down below and I will get back to you. And with all of that said, I hope you have an excellent day.